Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming to you with another episode of Stellaris Console Edition, the redo. Alrighty, when we left off, we had uh, discovered the L Gate, the normal gateway, and a Wormhole, and we're still continuing on our quest to expand our empire as completed. far as I possibly can. In the moment, though, we have uh, apparently an anomaly. Apparently, an anomaly. I can talk, really, I can. Despite expected projections, up to Farvis, the Pier Farvis, I'm gonna find out a way to pronounce that fucking system eventually. Uh, nine? Damn, that's a lot of system planets there. Has a particularly large, solid core beneath its incredibly thick mantle of unique gases. Our scientists recommend further investigation. Hmm. Research. Let's do it. See what's going on there. Yep, Pierfarvis system, system reconnaissance has been completed. foolishly made. As is as the Ionides. Hmm. I could gain a lot of society research, or I could just spread it out across all of the researches. Hmm, interesting. By what has to be beyond astronomical odds. The ISS Trailblazer actually managed to pinpoint the source of the odd signals as it soared past through the asteroid belt, a tiny alien construct. A simple scan reveals that it is some sort of ritualistic container, holding the remains of an alien spacefarer. Open the coffin and study the corpse. Nothing is sacred when science is on the line! Okay. Traditions available. Hells yeah. That'd be nice. That would also be nice. Um, let's go with this. Galactic Ambition. And then maybe we'll go for this. Maybe. Maybe. Anyway, we can help our... Construction uh, complete. Consumption of energy credits, the better. That essentially doubled what we were making, so that's good. System reconnaissance completed. There we go. Go back to the space station. Ooh. Huh. And an L-gate insight as well. Interesting. Astounding news from the ISS Emissary. Deep scans have revealed the unexpectedly large solid core of Aperifarvis 9 to be covered with the compressed remains of a sprawling medical complex, millions of years old. Though the intense mantle pressure of the gas giant severely limits the amount of data we can extract from the core surface, Science Officer Fritz Brinkman reports that the hidden structures match, beyond a doubt, the technology used to the enigmatic L-gates. The crew hypothesizes Upper Farvis 9 was in the. <laughs> That's a hell of a name. Uh, Upper Farvis 9 was a planetary medical facility created by the gate builders millennia ago. At some point, the complex was abandoned, and its automated gas replicators ran unchecked for untold centuries, gradually converting the planet into a gas giant. Incredible. That also means it's a resource we can exploit at some point. Hell yeah. System Beautiful. reconnaissance completed. Gotta love it. The fleet has been repaired and now to reinforce it. So it's back up to its previous strength. And hopefully they get to the debris in time, which they should. And should be fine from there. Why do I do that? Why do I keep doing that? Um, yeah, so far so good. So far so good. Construction complete. Yes, good. Good, 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 good. Now. That's good. Perfect. Estinda 3. Oh. Oh. Didn't know it had two features to it. 
planetary features. A dust desert and an ancient mining site. Oh uh, yeah, we saw that. And what's a planetary modifier? It's lush. Oh. Oh. Life thrives here. The fauna is plentiful and the flora grows rapidly. And it has a dust desert. Oh my god, this is this is wonderful. If only it wasn't an ocean planet. <laughs> uh, that limits how much I can do with it. But if I could terraform it to a continental planet. Would that alter the Lush modifier? I don't know. That's something we'll have to look into in the future. But for now, we're just going to wait and see. Um, the other planet that we have that we can use, the Maradetta. Yeah, it's best if we start moving towards that. That one is actually within our reach and doable. Kind of. I mean, that weak magnetic field makes it a little more annoying, but, uh... Oh, jeez. Little protection against cosmic radiation. Ooh. Ooh. That's not fun. That's not fun at all. Okay. Let's build our colony ship and send our people to the stars. And particularly this planet. What should we name it, though? Hmm. Nexon. Let's go with Nexon. System reconnaissance completed. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. Battle debris secured. Nice. Science division it. reports a new breakthrough. Ooh. There we go. <gasps> Allows us to terraform planets, just as I was thinking about needing it. Ooh, I might actually put, call that colony ship back if that's the case. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, let me see. What else do I have? Not a lot else. There is no simple solution to the problem of macro-scale reshaping of planetary crusts. Only bigger trowels and orbitally, orbitally deployed drills. I really want it, though. I really want it, though. Mm, I really want it, though. Okay. We'll go for it. We'll go for it. And I will... There we go. Stop colonizing. Yes, we'll... Stop the plan right now. Because this is far better. This is far better. And with that in mind, you're going to go back. Sorry to make you stop halfway. You're going to go back. Anomaly and found. Whoop. Take that system for us. A small and otherwise insignificant moon orbiting this gas giant appears to be on a trajectory that will soon result in a collision with its primary. Well then. Anomaly found. We are receiving a wick, a wick, a weak signal from the surface of this planet. The source appears to be some kind of tracking beacon. Interesting. And then after that, you can go back. Or, actually... 
Parvalem. And it has a pulsar. The pulsar would render ship and station shields inoperable. It does make it a little harder to defend. Let's look at Sizwetov. This one is a Class B, and it doesn't have any weird shenanigans to it. Okay. Well, then we'll upgrade this to a starport. I didn't need that opened up. <laughs> At least not yet. All right. Construction complete. Good. Good, 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 good. Well. Bijal. What do you got going on here? Class M Red Giant. It is a little more defensible. The Kerbal also is a very defensive positioning here. Not really, though. Kind of can take its way to, if there any fleets go through, do like a little sharp left turn in Taugawa. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um. Man. <laughs> when you have to think of defensive planning, that's always when it's just going to slow everything to a crawl. Uh, huh. fuck it. Kerbal has some stuff going on here, like the nebula, which could allow us to, you know, pull in some minerals from here. Despite it not being necessary, it would be nice to have. So let's make this a starport as well. And. With this... Mm, should I wait until they're done here? It'll take a while here. So... Considering how much stronger the... stuff is here. In... Uh, da -ba -da -ba -da Walmoro. got a whole bunch of stuff going on here let's let's build a star base here wow our uh <laughs> i just realized how crazily fast we have depleted our uh <laughs> our alloys holy shit all right um fuck When we hit 40, I'll probably make another alloy, uh, alloy plant or something like that. A small, short-range transmitter has been located on the surface of NKEF-6. I had to translate the Roman numerals for a second. It appears to be an ancient survey marker placed here eons ago to mark a large deposit of precious metals. The miners it was meant for evidently never arrived as the deposit is still here. Interesting. Oh, eventually it'll hit 40 and then I can do stuff with it. Ooh, observe the moon impact. One of the many moons circling... Kunbar? Kunbar. Kunbar 9 has a terminal Im orbit, rather. It will soon collide with the gas giant in what is sure to become a massive impact event. This event has been millions of years in the making, and it is a startling coincidence that the impact has been fated to occur just after a visit by one of our ships. 
Many of our scientists wish to observe and record the event, but we only have a narrow window before it is too late. Holy New shit. Rep. Let's do that. Kunbar. Everything else can wait. Research this right now. And then finish up there. Then there, and then there, and then there, and then head out this way. Oh yeah. Anomaly found. Ooh. Impressive structures litter a small area on the surface of Ankef 8, practically begging for some archaeological work. All right, let's do it. Do it, motherfucker. All right. And they're heading to Walmoro. Beautiful. All right. That's all, all our rest of our stuff doing. Oh, boy. Terrestrial sculpting is going to take a long time. Holy fuck. Dude. Jesus. All right. Abandoned amusement park. The structures on NCAF 8, NCAF 8 are not as old as we first believed. It seems to be a playground or amusement park of some sort. Science officer Fritz Brinkman notes that many of the contraptions are highly complex creations that we can learn much from, and that, to the builder's alien eyes, this might have been a cutting-edge sensor array, or even a gigantic art installation. Regardless, to us felons, it looks mostly like a place where you would take your young and let them amuse themselves. Intriguing. All right. System reconnaissance completed. Nice. Let's move on to the next one. Anomaly found. Ooh. We are picking up life signs coming from somewhere within the interior of this asteroid. This definitely warrants a closer investigation. Damn right it does. Special project complete. Hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We were successful in our attempt to record the collision between Kunbar... Pfft, Kunbar 9 and its moon. The event was captured from several different angles and transmitted live through our uh, throughout our space I'm stumbling over my words and I don't know why <laughs> the event was captured from several different angles and transmitted live throughout our space most importantly our scientists under the leadership of Inez Renard were able to record a large amount of value valuable physics data that will surely benefit our research good good to know good to know marvelous All right, and we continue onward. Sorry, I had to have a drink of my drink. Amazingly, while conducting their survey of AKU... <laughs> Damn, that's a hell of a name. AKU 9, YZ 1. That's a 7. Oh, that's a 7. Sorry. <laughs> AKU 9Y71. The crew of the ISS Trailblazer picked up several life signs coming from within the asteroid. There appears to be a colony of large burrowing worms, like lithovores, within the rock, which has been riddled with tunnels. These unique life forms have somehow adapted to a life in the coldness of space. These creatures should be studied. We can find out what the fuck is going on with them. Construction complete. That's some weird shit. Really? Nice. And have them definitely work on the mining stations because that's a lot of stuff Construction they can Construction complete. In. System reconnaissance completed. Beautiful. And... Anomaly found. Oh, that came up just as I was pausing. A small rectangular object on the surface of this planet is deflecting all scanning beams like a mirror. 
our sensors are unable to determine its material composition. Well, let's go and find out. I'm probably not going to put a shipyard here, but maybe an anchorage. And I do not have enough alloys for this. So Construction I'll complete. Next month. Construction complete. Okay. And there we go. Make our crew quarters. There we go. Beautiful. And that's also completed. Good. And it's returning to that station. Good. Good, 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 good. And I can't do anything with them yet either. And that's what they're working on. Good. Felon Day. Oops, that's not what I meant. <laughs> now I can work on fucking bringing in more alloys. Finally. Jesus. System reconnaissance completed. Whoop. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. More space amoeba. Oh, they're not that strong. They're not that strong at all. They also have a planet here. Oh, it's a small one. It's an arid world to boot. Fuck it. Uh, but it does impact our ability to explore further this way. Grr. Okay. Alrighty. Alrighty. We'll work on that. Hmm. While conducting surface scans of Kunbar 1... Science officer Renez Renard and the crew of the ISS Arbiter discovered what appears to be an artificially carved slab of rock covered in alien writing. They have not detected any other signs of alien activity on the planet, and exactly how this mural came to be here is a mystery. We have prepared a special project to translate the text. Fascinating. New sit rep. Well, we'll have to find out now, won't we? Yep, you're gonna have to run. In the middle of something. Kinbar. And work on that. And then survey that system. And then here. And then there. 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 And then that way. There you go. Setting up the path again. Alright. <sighs> As much as I didn't want to, I might have to up how many I have in this fleet after all. As much as I didn't want to right now. Looks like I might not have a choice. And I can't even make all of them anyway, because I don't have a lot of alloys. But it's neither here nor there. But, I can sell a bunch of minerals. Especially since I'm bringing in a lot of them. Yeah, let's do that. And then, bring in 250. Yeah, that should work. That should work for now. And... Oh, that's yellow because it doesn't have the crew quarters installed yet. That's what that's about. Okay. And... Special herbal. project complete. Oh, completed now. Science officer Inez Renard has managed to partially translate the alien mural discovered on Kunbar 1. The text contains a staggering amount of data, and the mural evidently serves as some sort of low-tech library. It describes, in broad terms, the collected technological knowledge of an alien civilization that dominated this region of the galaxy some 80 million years ago. A lot of it is already known to us, but the data does contain several promising leads from, for technologies we have yet to consider. There is enough data here to keep our scientists busy for decades, but we will need an orbital research station to continue the translation efforts. Intriguing. That is definitely something we'll want to look into. 
And when it comes to Kerbal, now that we have enough of these, let's look at where it's located. Eh, maybe we'll go with trade hubs for this one. And we'll aim for a nebula refinery first. Sounds good to me. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. Hey, UV lasers has finally been done. Beautiful. Let's look at what we can do. Uh, I'm not going to do the self-evolving logic yet, because that costs quite a bit. But... Improved deflectors would be nice. Improved reactor boosters, nah, not really as nice. Global energy management would be very nice. Would it be worthwhile? Maybe. Depends. Hmm. Hmm. It would definitely make us not have to worry about energy credits for a while. That'd be true. That'd be very true. Although, improved deflectors would help with our immediate fleet now. Let's go with that. The up... Busy... Okay. These updated deflector screens are capable of soaking up even more punishment before they overload. Beautiful. Let's go with it. Wait, I meant to look at scientists. See what we got. <gasps> Another spark of genius. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Lee Howard, but I have to bring in Ariana. I have to. A spark of genius rarely comes along, especially like that. I have to. I have to. Especially since it will help up the amount of progress we make substantially alrighty anyway will I keep uh, Lee Howard around yeah um, I might need another scientist at some point if nothing else to uh, take another science ship out for a spin but for right now he can sit out for now for now Actually, system reconnaissance completed. Let me think of an idea. I can have him. Anomaly found. Ooh. Dean Glass has developed the expertise in particles trade. Construction complete. Ooh. A colossal impact crater hints that something big collided with the surface of this moon once. Let's research it. And that went up. That one's already been looked into. And... Finished its construction queue. Okay, so now we're making a lot more alloys. Beautiful. Good to Construction hear. complete. All right, and the other science ship, put Lee Howard on it, and you shall help assist research. Anomaly found. Beautiful. A remarkable array of gases are being vented on Arbitraeus One, ones not usually found on Molten Worlds. Some of these gases show promising industrial value. Interesting. Also, I didn't realize our planet was circling a gas giant. <laughs> that is rather unique. It's something I did not expect. At all. Lockney is a molten world? <laughs> Truett is a gas giant. Huh. Ah. But this Schimmel's world. Hmm. 
a lot of these things I had no idea. I didn't really look too much into our native star system. That's actually kind of cool. A lot of that's kind of cool. We're circling a fucking gas giant. <laughs> Who'd have thunk that? All right. Now Lee Howard is helping our research from aboard another science vessel. So that way he's not just sitting there doing nothing. An asteroid collision. A large, mineral-rich asteroid collided with Ruinum C1A at some point during the previous thousand years in what appears, in what must have been, a major impact event. I'd say. An abundance of minerals can now be found on the moon in the vicinity of the impact crater. A fortuitous event. Event. I can talk, really, I can't. Uh, okay. System reconnaissance completed. Eventually, this will be done. Ooh, extremophilia. Huh. Fritz Brinkman and his crew. For some reason, I thought Fritz was a woman. Don't know why I thought that. Anyway, uh, have made a surprising discovery on Arbitraeus 1. The molten planet is home to an exotic array of extremophilic microorganisms. These bacteria live deep inside the volcanic vents that scar the planet, thriving in the extremely high temperatures produced there. This unprecedented find is our first known example of organic life forms flourishing on molten planets. Moreover, the extremophiles on Arbitraeus 1 are in fact responsible for the rare gases detected in its thin atmosphere producing these valuable components as a byproduct of their metabolic processes. So, basically, these gases are its farts. Okay, well, I mean, as long as they're useful. <laughs> Fascinating. System reconnaissance completed. Alright, Kerbal will eventually be done. Construction complete. And, hey, there we go. Now the construction ship gets to sit there and not charge me as much energy credits just for sitting there. Oh, we have encountered some form of alien vessels in the Regor system. These strange objects have been flagged as Regor until we can learn more about them. Interesting. Oh, hello! Two planets that are possible. Good ones. Although Regor 2 looks like an ocean world and small. Yep, I had a feeling. Regor... <laughs> Regor 4A. That's it. It's even tinier. Ow! Come on! Alright, alright, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Alright. Well, in the meantime, let's investigate Regor, since it'll complete in five months. Holy shit. It's faster than I expected. Far faster than I expected. God's damn. Fritz Brinkman is leveled up. All right. Spark of genius. Beautiful. Adaptable and expertise. System reconnaissance completed. I don't know why I was looking. I was just bored. Science division <laughs> reports a new breakthrough. Do we now? Our Betraya system has been fully surveyed. Beautiful. Love to hear it. Super solid materials. The production and understanding of super solids are of immeasurable value. Damn right they are. <gasps> and now I can get destroyers. While planet build speed is nice, I'd rather have destroyers. Unlocks ship type destroyer. While larger than Corvettes, destroyer hull configurations still make for comparatively nimble gunboats. Gunboats. I almost said gumboats, and that's really stupid. <laughs> All right. As a large two-section design, the destroyer offers a broad array of strategic armament options. Good to hear. Good to hear indeed. Any way I can upgrade my powers of my fleet is always a good thing. Anomaly found. Ooh. Isam system. Heavy pulse. 
I sum pulses steadily. It's high its helioseismology indicating an internal composition far denser than expected. What could be responsible for their surprising density? I don't know. But let's investigate. Let's find out what it could be. Where is it right now? What the how the How did... What the... Oh, you're continuing on your path towards that. <laughs> Didn't expect that at all. Well... <laughs> we now know at least this doesn't just stop. It actually connects around this way. <laughs> well, all right. Before you get any further and kill yourself, let's survey these systems that are close by to where ours already are. And then uh, continue on from there. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know what was going on. I thought it actually ended there. I didn't expect it to continue going. Jesus. That's kind of cool, though. Good to know as well. Through our surveys of habitable worlds, our biologists have collected a vast amount of data on alien life forms. Many of our older theories on the development of life have been disproved, and our scientific community has had to build entirely new models from scratch. Our most interesting findings are being displayed at the newly dedicated Museum of Z Exobiology. I was about to say Xenobiology, which would have worked better, on Felon Day. The public is enthralled, and many donations have come in to aid the continued search of strange life forms. Beautiful. Excellent. You love to hear it. System reconnaissance completed. Special project complete. The, muta the Mutagen Merchants Guild. After successfully translating their language, we have established communications. Well, hello, big insectoid buddy. Old pal, I guess. Well met, friends. I represent the Mutagen Merchant Guild, and let me be the first to welcome you to the Regor system. Our organization consists of hundreds of independent Mutagen merchant captains who brave the spaceways in search of the next good deal. At our facilities, you will be able to trade away some of your excess resources. Please contact us. Please contact us if you are interested in such an arrangement. Well met. Oh, cosmic diamond. Well then. While on the surface, Isium. While on the surface, Essium appears to be an ordinary white dwarf, the star hides an intriguing secret. By studying Essium's pulsations, the ISS Remembrance crew has discovered its composition to be almost entirely crystallized carbon. So basically a diamond. This astronomical crystal lattice seems to have formed as the star cooled, originating in its gas-fusing core and growing outward over time. Essium I keep saying that. It's Essium when it's actually Isum. 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 Which is funny because it's entirely a star made of ice. <laughs> or rather, diamonds, which is, you know, icy. Alright, I'm gonna shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's Isum. It is a diamond of cosmological proportions glinting behind a white veil of oxygen and helium. Fascinating. Fascinating stuff. Yeah. Class F star. Anomaly found. Ooh. The debris field of which QH-32X is part of Royals and Swirls under the influence of unknown forces. This is actually challenging for Dean Glass, even though we know what's going on. Unless there is something else going on that I just don't know of. 
that could be true too. That would be bad. But uh, we'll find out, I guess. Jesus. And we're at 29 months towards the next thing. That's good. We're good here. I could probably sell some of these. I could probably get away with that. And then buy more alloys with the excess. Construction funds. complete. Ooh. Beautiful. Hey, you completed. Nice, wonderful. All right. Then let's go to Vokan and build a starbase there. I like the sound of that. I like the sound of it. So far, I haven't seen any other civilizations, and it's kind of making me depressed a little bit. I was hoping I'd see someone at some point. System reconnaissance Jesus. completed. I mean, not that I'm complaining too much, because, I mean, once we find another one, it'll be a race Construction to complete. meet them at the border. So that way I don't give up any ground of uh, things that I've found. discovered. Ooh. A colossal impact crater hints that something big collided with the surface of this moon once. Alrighty. Hopefully it's something just as good as the last time. Alrighty. And let's... Oh, they have an upgrade waiting for them. I didn't realize. Huh. Oh! The massive crater on Marath 5A appears to be the result of a collision with a starship. From the size of the crater, we suspect that a ship exiting a hyperlane at maximum velocity rammed the moon for reasons unknown roughly 10,000 years ago. The ISS Emissary has picked up residual subspace echoes near the crash site, reminiscent of a collapsed hyperparticulate field. But as the ship itself disintegrated on impact, the theory cannot be verified. Remarkable and scary. Remember where you're projecting your, uh, <laughs> projecting your ship to go, kids, because that will go bad very quickly if you don't really make ship take good care of it. All right, that's good. That's good. Perfect. Can't complain about that. Reinforce the fleet. Should I do that now or should I wait? I should probably do that now. There we go. Get that out of the way. System reconnaissance completed. Oh yeah? Good. Good. Not a lot there, but it's something. I was System actually surprised, if completed. anything, that I didn't run into System the civilization completed. going this way. I'm really surprised that that didn't happen. Alright, mm -hmm. that's all done, that's all done. Where is that, anyway? Up there, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And the Map the Stars Edict is done, but not for long. There we go. <laughs> I hit the button and then it didn't go, so I was a little confused. I was going to let it wait, but... Now I know it's all good. Waha! Alright, so. Onward we go. And... So far, so good. Brumium. Oh. dimensional pocket. The ISS Remembrance never made it all the way to QH-32X to study the anomalies surrounding it. The ship, along with Science Officer Dean Glass and crew, blinked out of existence as it was navigating the debris field, and then reappeared minutes later. Dean Glass reports that they found themselves, briefly, in some extra-dimensional space. External viewports revealed that they were surrounded by countless ships of alien design, suspended in a seemingly endless void. Before the crew could get their bearings, the vision abruptly faded, and they found themselves back in regular space. 
However, roughly half of the crew are missing. Science officer Dean Glass speculates that they may have been selectively trapped by some unknowable mechanism in that strange space. Uh-oh. That can't be good. That can't be good at all. Ow. Oh. The missing members of the ISS Remembrance's crew, thought lost to the dimensional rift, have reappeared. They hailed us from aboard an unknown vessel, not entirely dissimilar to our own science ships, idling close to where the ISS Remembrance originally experienced the dimensional disturbance. They claim to remember nothing of their time outside our dimension, aside from a vague awareness of having been away for some time. They wish for nothing but to return to the service under Science Officer Dean Glass and intend to surrender their ship to Felinian authorities. I don't see why not. Sure. Anomaly found. We get a random science ship. Why not? As long as it doesn't pull any weird shenanigans later. I don't see why we can't. Initial scans of the asteroid TLDR-3PO. That's a combo. Suggest a... <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep laughing over the name. Suggest a dense mass of wrought metal within it. Perhaps a part of some machinery or other technology. Further scanning required for more detailed data. Fair enough, we'll do that. Our new little science ship. Let's send it back to Kerbal Station for now. Alrighty. And once again, we are a little over time, so I'm going complete. to end the episode here for right now. Thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. Click the like button if you like this particular video. And share in comments so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together and I will see y'all in the next episode. This has been the one the only Stray Cat. Playing games and exploring further. Finding even weirder shit than we last thought. Uh, apparently a dimensional rift that then stole some people but then gave them back. And a science ship to boot. And, uh, yep, we're just exploring our galaxy more and eventually we shall expand it and find some new civilization just not right now for some fucking reason i don't know but i'm gonna take it for you